Hello, my name is Max Kraminski. I'm a PhD student in the Expressive Intelligence Studio at UC Santa Cruz. Today I'm going to be talking about Why Are We Like This, a co-creative storytelling game that uses artificial intelligence and social simulation to support player co-creativity in telling a story with other players. This is a game that Melanie Dickinson, my collaborator, and I have been working on for about a year now. In this talk, I'm going to go into some background as to um, what it is that we hope to build and why, talk about some design goals, um, then give a design overview of what we built so far, and then talk about three key contributions that I think are sort of the most interesting things about why we like this so far from an AI and a design perspective. So to give a little bit of background, um, Why Are We Like This was originally conceived of in part as a, success as a successor to Bad News, a game that actually came out of our lab a couple of years ago, um, in which there's a sort of small American town that's been generated through, through years and years of social simulation, and you interact with a succession of characters in this town in hopes of finding the next of kin of someone who has recently died and delivering to them the bad news. In so doing, you interact with Ben Samuel, um, who is uh, the actor on the right-hand side of the screen here, and Ben is sort of portraying the different characters in this town as you interact with them. Meanwhile, James, um, James Ryan, is on the left-hand side of this partition at a console with access to the complete history of the small town that's been simulated, and feeding Ben information about the character you're currently talking to, which can include things like their personality traits, so Ben knows how to portray them, but also things like their relationships with other characters, and nuggets of interesting sort of in information about the history of the town that might sort of be useful in, in weaving a story about what's going on in this town overall. And through this um, collaboration of two expert participants, Ben and James, the naive participant who is the player who's coming in, and then also the simulation, um, this tends to produce a lot of really interesting emergent stories. However, it requires these two expert participants to make, it, to make the whole thing run. And as a result of that, we were hoping to create something that's sort of similar to Bad News, that could create a similar sort of co-creative play experience, but that is playable maybe in your, in your home with some of your friends, um, people who you might know, like not requiring these specific participants to be driving the whole thing to make it run. And we were given some encouragement, I think, in, in thinking that this was possible by the existence and sort of the enjoyability of these collaborative storytelling tabletop RPGs, things like Microscope and The Quiet Year, in which you and some other players sit down at the table, um, you tell a story together, or you write a story, or you draw a map, um, following these very simple rules to sort of guide your co-creative process. And at the end, you've produced some artifact that tells the history of your play session, basically. So our design goals for this were an AI-assisted collaborative storytelling play experience, something similar to Bad News, but in which um, you didn't really need an expert present to guide the play experience, um, where the computer maintains consistency, perhaps by, like, for instance, using a social simulation to say, these are the things that characters want to do right now, and they're not going to do things they don't want to do because that wouldn't make sense. Um, where the computer suggests things that might happen next in the story to prevent writer's block and things like that. But also where players specifically um, have the, the job of writing text for themselves, um, to support this design pattern of what we call extrapolative narrativization, which is the thing we see in Dwarf Fortress um, retelling practices, for instance, where players write stories about simulations in which details of the simulation are um, sort of woven in, but maybe integrated or built on in ways that the simulation itself doesn't directly model. So this is what why we like this looks like so far. This is actually a design mockup of the UI, but we've got something pretty close to this working as an interactive interface now. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see a transcript of the actions that have happened so far, including both system-generated terse descriptions of actions in bold, and also longer player-generated descriptions of, of actions in more detail below. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see a list of author goals, that, or a list of actions that the system thinks should, might be able to happen next, based on both what the characters want to do, and then also on your author goals in the middle, which are things that you as the players have decided should happen, and that you've sort of communicated to the system. Uh, the three key ideas that I'm going to pull out for the rest of this talk here are the use of these author goals to communicate player intent to the AI, the use of story sifting to help players make sense of all the complex things that are happening in the story world state here, and then also the use of story sifting again to implement character subjectivity um, by giving characters sort of ways to interpret the events that have happened in the world and build on them. So number one, these author goals here, we're going to zoom in and look at a, like a, a set of author goals that have been specified here. We've got involve Bella in plot, We've got Escalate Progress versus Order, and we've got Escalate Survival versus Order. So these are all things that the players might recently want to have happen in the story that the system knows how to support in some way. In this case, involving a character and escalating tension between a couple of values, such as progress and order, that characters might hold in this story world. You can also see there's buttons for adding new author goals, for removing existing ones, and for marking existing ones as complete. And the idea is that you finish a chapter when all the author goals you've specified for that chapter are marked as complete, and then you can move on to the next one um, with a new set of author goals and sort of do it all over again. So this guides the action suggestions that the system provides players with. So in this case, you can see that the top action that's recommended here, Bella argue about progress with Flora, 
um, advances two of the author goals that are that are present simultaneously. It, it both involves Bella in the plot, and it also escalates this tension of progress versus order that the players would like to see escalated currently. And then, when the players select one of these actions to have happen, it gets locked in and added to the transcript. So you see the bold, sort of terse description of the action up top, and then again, the sort of system, or the player-generated description of the action, which is sort of a freely editable text box below. Number two, the story world investigator is a tool for sort of for figuring out what's going on in these complicated simulated story worlds where there's so much going on all the time. Um, the idea here is that basically you run a simulation machine, the simulation machine goes burr, it produces a whole bunch of events, and then the total number of events that it produces tends to be overwhelming. And so what you need is this process of story sifting to sort of parse it down. Um, story sifting basically involves looking at these massive databases of events that have transpired, filtering them down to just the ones that match a certain micro-story pattern, and then raising these micro-stories to the player in some way that they can then interact with and sort of weave that into the story they're telling themselves. So in this case, the micro-story we look at might be A starts a project, a character A, um, the same character decides the project isn't any good, gives up on it, then a second character B comes along and talks to them about that project several times, and then because of B's interest, A finally decides to resume work on the project. So this is sort of a micro story that could be woven into a larger plot, maybe sort of furthering certain author goals, such as um, showing that B and A have some degree of rapport, or maybe sort of portraying this as something good that B has done for A, or maybe as something bad if A en ends up later on deciding that this project was actually a bad thing for them all along. So returning to this problem of overwhelm, what the story world investigator is, is basically a tool for taking all these massive number of events that have happened and pre presenting them to the user in a way that they can more readily sort of like query and find interesting emergent situations. And that includes things like looking at the history of a particular character's involvement with other characters. You can see here that you can select like different projects that have happened, different relationships. And then on the right hand side, we've got a detailed view of the currently selected entity, in this case, Bella, a character in this story world. And we can see her values, we can see her curses, which are things that sort of like um, inhibit her actions in some ways, and then relationships that she has with other characters in this case are sort of summarized briefly below. And you can click on, for instance, these other characters like Anya and Flora to see more about those characters and their context in the story world. So all of this is basically a set of tools that do the same thing that James does um, in feeding information to Ben in a bad news play session. And then finally, we also use the story searching technology to implement what we call character subjectivity, which is basically different characters looking at the same set of events that have happened in the story world. In this case, we're going to have two characters, Izzy and Nicole, and getting very different messages out of them, because these different characters have different personality traits and therefore use different story sifting patterns to make sense of the world. So Izzy, for instance, is looking at this set of 25 events and pulling out these three as interesting in the story sifting pattern that basically makes her say, um, wow, I'm so bad at this, Nicole must hate me. And then Nicole is looking at these same events with a different story sifting pattern and saying instead, Izzy does so many cool things, I wonder if they'll be my friend. And these divergent interpretations of the same events driven by story sifting and the access to different story sifting patterns produces a lot of emergent drama between these characters. And this is sort of the, the driving thing that moves Walt's stories forward. So altogether in conclusion, um, why are we like this is an AI assisted collaborative storytelling play experience in which players specify author goals to influence the AI suggestions of what should happen next. Um, story sifting tools help players make sense of the story world and all the things going on in it. And meanwhile, these characters apply story sifting to interpret the world, which leads to emergent conflict between them. I'm going to leave you off here with a, a sort of a small system diagram of the overall Walt system. And then you can also find all the papers that I've talked about um, at mcrimmons.github.io. Thank you.